I whipped up a batch of my favorite vanilla cake from the blog. There's a link in the description box below. That's cooling. And now to make these extra special, I'm making a brown sugar frosting for them. To do this, we're gonna want one half of a cup of brown sugar. Brown sugar is delicious, but it likes to do its own thing. So you're gonna want to just press it into the measuring cup or use a scale. Half a cup is about 110 grams. So plop that into a small pan. We also want three tablespoons or 45 ml of water and a pinch of salt. My sugar's already melting. I'm taking this over medium high heat. Stir your mixture together while it comes to a boil. It happens super fast. And then we're gonna reduce to medium and let this cook for an additional minute. We wanted to make a solution out of the brown sugar and reduce some of the water that we added. This smells so good. After about a minute, you can see it's thickened up. It's a beautiful caramel. We're gonna pop this into a bowl. My brown sugar frosting is in process, it's cooling. My delicious vanilla cake is cool, so we can make our frosting, start crumbling it up, and get these cake pops going. Today's video is sponsored by Domino Sugar. More than just sugar, your partner in the kitchen for over 120 years, ensuring a trusted baking experience. I love using Domino Sugar in almost everything. You see this box all the time on Preppy Kitchen. And it's because I can always trust the quality and the results I get from using Domino Sugar. With over 120 years of dedication to bakers just like you, Domino is the trusted sugar for expert bakers who know they want the best results every time. Whenever I open a box of Domino Sugar, I know I'm gonna get the best results ever. My brown sugar is gonna have a wonderful soft consistency. It's not gonna be rock hard or full of lumps and it's always gonna taste delicious powdered sugar the same and I've got to tell you that when you're using sugar you're not just adding sweetness you're also adding softness sugar gives you a softer baked good with a wonderful mouth feel that's the domino effect into a large bowl 10 tablespoons of room temperature butter it should be really soft we're gonna cream it up <laughs> I'm gonna plug this in and then we're gonna cream it up <laughs> get that butter nice and creamy now our brown sugar syrup is here. This is amazing. And it's really a thicker syrup. It's basically a caramel, but we're gonna mix it in and it's gonna be amazing. It's a little cold in the kitchen, so it's extra syrupy today. <laughs> we're gonna beat this into the butter and get it all mixed up. Mmm, butter and brown sugar caramel. Oh, that sounds delicious. Now we're gonna add in one cup of powdered sugar. In you go. Okay, we're gonna mix this up until it's nice and creamy. And if it looks a little dry, you could definitely add in some creamer milk. After just a little bit of mixing, you have this amazing frosting. Don't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You're gonna love this frosting. You're gonna use this frosting on a ton of other things. Trust. Frosting's done, cake is cooled. I'm gonna transfer just a little bit of frosting to a separate bowl in case I need it. The edges of your cake are just a bit more caramelized, a little bit tougher than the inside, and you wanna have the same consistency throughout so your cake pops are really easy to roll and don't have any weird parts that come apart. And now with your clean hands, you're gonna grab a handful of cake and crumble it up until it is nice and fine. I'm doing that directly into the frosting, but you could do it into a separate bowl if you prefer. This is in nice fine pieces like this. You want them to be nice and small because the next step is to mix it all together. I'm gonna use my mixer again. You could do this by hand or you could use a stand mixer too. All that reserved frosting is going in. So I'm using the whole batch. And right now the mixer is breaking up any of the larger clumps that were left over of cake and just getting it nicely mixed. Good job, mixer. Finally, I'm gonna use my spatula and just Give this a once over, kind of press it together a bit and check the texture, making sure there's no lumps of frosting that haven't been mixed in. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. <laughs> it smells so good. It looks kind of like a wet sandy texture and that's what we want. Now it's the fun part, rolling these into balls. So you want your cake pops to be as round as possible, but don't worry if they're a little bit oblong because you can fix that after the first chill. If you want your cake balls to be exactly the same size, you can use the scale and weigh them out. These guys are about 40 grams each, give or take. I'm rolling my last cake ball. 
It's going into the freezer for 30 minutes or the fridge for four hours. It's your choice. We need to firm them up and then we can dip and decorate. Towards the end of your freeze, it's time for the most important part of cake pops and that is your coating. I'm bringing about an inch or so of water to a simmer. So put that on heat while that's warming up. I have my 12 ounces of melting wafers and I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a chop so they melt evenly. Any kind of chocolate and even chocolate melting wafers do not wanna get burned. So if they're in smaller pieces, it's just a little bit easier. My water is warmed up and now I'm gonna transfer our white chocolate melting wafers into a glass bowl. I'm melting these on the double boiler because I've learned the hard way, it's easier. We're working over some simmering water. The water is not touching the bowl. And I'm just gonna stir occasionally and you'll see it start melting. So I will take it on and off the heat just to keep the temperature at a nice low melting point. I'm adding in a tablespoon of shortening right now just to thin it out. It's getting there, but it looks a little thick and I wanna have a really nice dipping consistency. So you could use shortening, you could use a coconut oil that's solid at room temperature and those will both work to thin out your dipping. If you stir any shortening or coconut oil in, make sure you work it in super well. There can be no streaks left because those will crack immediately on your cake pops. This looks really nice. That's a good dipping consistency. And now we're ready to dip our cake pops. All right, I'm transferring my candy melt into a narrower glass. This will make dipping easier. You're setting up a little assembly line right now. You're gonna take three or four of your cake balls out of the freezer at a time, get a stick, dip it in your melting chocolate. <laughs> and then you're going to push it in but don't go too far because it'll come all the way through. We're gonna dip this and the key is to get it nice and clean. Your clean edge comes from tapping off the excess and getting it nice and smooth. But between you and me, you only need one smooth side because all of these have a pretty side and the side that tastes good. <laughs> that looks pretty nice. We're gonna let this hang out here. And you might have noticed I'm using a little spatula just to catch some of the excess and remove it from the bottom. If you want, you can just add a sprinkle of sprinkles on top and they look super cute. Just make sure you add the sprinkles right away because the shell hardens really quickly. That might be the best cake pop ever. That brown sugar frosting is such a winner with the candy shell. Mwah. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe.